How's it going everybody? Ali Flores here with OrlandoVacation.com where we're giving you the best tips and tricks how to make your Orlando vacation the best vacation ever. What are we going to be talking about today? I'll let you know since, you know, I have the script. Everything you need to know about Disney's Epcot. That's what we're talking about today. A vision of a futuristic city turned theme park. What? This is everything you need to know about Disney World's Epcot. But first, if you haven't done this, click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you can get notified of new and helpful videos for planning your next Orlando vacation. We all want that, so should you. Okay, here we go. Walt Disney had a vision of a futuristic inhabited city as a permanent attraction, an experimental prototype community of tomorrow, or Animal Kingdom. No, of course it's Epcot. The full vision did not come to fruition after his passing, but the idea of it eventually became Epcot. It opened on October 1st, 1982, with the two main areas of Future World and the World Showcase. It was the second park to open in Walt Disney World, 11 years after the one and only Magic Kingdom. To help you with your trip to Epcot, we've put together an Epcot park plan and tips. Let's start at the front, shall we? When you first arrive and pass the turnstiles, you won't be able to not notice the icon of the park, Spaceship Earth, or as a lot of us call it, the giant golf ball, or the Epcot ball. Spaceship Earth is actually the first of the Epcot attractions. It's a dark ride that takes you through the past and future of inventions. The first half of the park, previously known as Future World, consists of three areas, World Celebration, World Discovery, and World Nature. The beginning of World Celebration is the Epcot icon itself. Past it is Journey to Imagination, a dark family ride starring Figment, the original mascot of the Epcot Park. Guests can also step into Club Cool and sample different sodas from around the world. Now, we suggest only the brave try Beverly first, or that relative that's getting on your nerves on this trip, tell them that Beverly tastes amazing. Ugh, just thinking about it. Now, just after World Celebration, to your right is World Nature. World Nature has Seas with Nemo, which takes you on an adventure to a real aquarium and is also home to Turtle Talk with Crush himself. There is Living with the Land, a boat ride showing a greenhouse that has food being grown to be served in Epcot. So a lot of the food that you're going to be consuming was right there, locally sourced, like literally. Also, catch a ride on Soarin' Around the World, then grab food at either the Garden Grill with Chip and Dale or Sunshine Seasons. Now, let's jump right over to World Discovery. World Discovery is all about exploration and future technology. You can ride the Out of This World ride, Mission Space. This ride simulates traveling to space and allows guests to experience forces up to 2.5 Gs. This ride has two modes, orange and green. Now the orange one is going to be a bit more intense, the green one a little less. Speaking of the cosmos, you can eat in a celestial station in Space 220. Remember, make those reservations first. Next, test your speed on Test Track, then experience the thrills of Guardians of the Galaxy's Cosmic Rewind, a dark launch coaster. Now let's leave this side of the park and head over to World Showcase. World Showcase is designed to look like a traditional world fair where countries come together to show off their culture, food, and history. Let's start by going to the right in the Canada Pavilion. It is designed to look like the picturesque mountains and wilderness of Canada. You can see Canada far and wide, a 360 experience. There's live entertainment on the mill stage and the signature restaurant here is Le Cellier Steakhouse, or if you're from America, Le Cellar. Uh, right after Canada is the UK Pavilion. This is a replica of an English village and garden. You can grab a meal at the Rose and Crown. Live music is performed on the band stage in the garden. You can also have a cup of tea at the Tea Caddy. A very popular pavilion is going to be the France Pavilion. France is home to Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, a dark trackless ride. This area is designed to look like a neighborhood in Paris. There's plenty of perfumes you can try, and after sampling those Parisian wares, you can eat at Chefs de France. Or try any of the delicious treats from the Patisserie. One of the most beautiful pavilions is up next, Morocco. It is intricately designed and a great place to get photos. Explore through the tiled atrium and bazaar and be transported to another place. Flavorful tapas style servings are available at the Spice Road table and sample treats at the Tangerine Cafe. 
One of the largest pavilions is next with Japan. Here is a large courtyard by Pagoda and Tori Gate. Mitsukoshi is a popular shopping destination with Japanese clothing, snacks, decorations, and pop culture items such as items from manga and anime. You can eat in a few areas from quick service to full service. A fun experience is eating at Teppan Edo, a teppanyaki style restaurant with the food cooked in front of you. Next, we come back to the United States in the American Adventure. Conveniently, also the name of the animatronic show in this pavilion, featuring historical moments of the United States. Here is the largest stage in Epcot, where live performances happen during festivals, and also the candlelight processional happens during the holidays. There is quick service food available, as well as different beers and funnel cakes by the Regal Eagle Smokehouse. Before you leave, you have to catch Voices of Liberty. They sound amazing. It's more of a patriotic type song, but it's all a cappella. Take a trip over to Italy once you've got your American fill in. The Italy Pavilion is designed to look like Venice. As you enjoy the ambiance, you may see a comedic mime. I didn't, I didn't take mine. Put on a show. Enjoy delicious Italian food at Tutto Italia Ristorante and Via Napoli Ristorante e Pizzeria. For a different style of meal, head over to the next pavilion of Germany. Here in the beer garden, it's always Oktoberfest. Try assorted beers and treats and all the caramel you want in Caramel Kuche. There is shopping available for items from Germany, including the Christmas staple of the pickle for the tree. Next, we go through the Paifang Gate into the China Pavilion. Here is a replica of the Temple of Heaven, shops, and a picturesque pond. Watch the Reflections of China, a circle vision film. Peruse the large shop and enjoy the acrobatic show. There is a sit-down service at the Nine Dragons for food or the Lotus Blossom Cafe for to-go. Another very busy pavilion is next with Norway. Here lives two very famous queens, Elsa and Anna. Frozen Ever After is a very popular dark boat ride. You can also do a princess dining experience in the Akershus, have school bread at the Kringla Bakery, and then shop in the Puffin's Roost. Last, but certainly not least, is the Mexico Pavilion. Aside from the delicious eats and kiosks when you first enter, you can also hear live music with a mariachi band and see Senor Donald Duck. Inside the pyramid is an inventive experience where it feels like you're outside at night in a Mexican town. You can sample different tequilas and margaritas at La Cava de Tequila. You can learn about the culture with art and statues displayed. Kiosks sell different items like sugar skulls for Dia de los Muertos. There's a sit-down restaurant in San Angel Inn, and you can ride the Gran Fiesta boat to see the Three Caballeros, which by the way, my daughter and I always have to do. Another year-round thing that Epcot is known for is its festivals and the World Showcase. First is the Festival of the Arts at the beginning of the year where art of Disney characters are on display by local and famous artists. Now, here's something you should know. It's not just Disney characters that they're painting. They, they have their own art on display as well. Themed food and drinks are available for each festival in assorted kiosks. The next is the Flower and Garden Festival in spring where topiaries are placed around the park in the design of Disney characters. For the summer, the famous Food and Wine Festival happens with extra countries added in the kiosk for people to sample bites and drinks. The last is the International Festival of the Holidays. Countries share how they celebrate the holidays and New Year around the world. Now, how many days can you spend at Epcot? Well, the choice is yours, really. You could spend a full day there or just a half day. Epcot has plenty of attractions, dining options, and events that could easily fill a full day schedule. As for crowd level, guests can expect Epcot to be pretty busy. There's always events going on and there's a new ride, you may have heard of it, the new Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind ride at Epcot. Honestly, with that alone, you can expect the parks to be busy. Not to mention the events they have going on throughout the year. Of course, the peak seasons are going to be spring break, summer, and all the holidays in between. If you're wanting to go during a less crowded part of the year, we recommend going during September or late January, as these are the months that tend to be the slowest. If you're wanting more information, we've included a link in the description for a guide to the Epcot and all of Walt Disney World. Go check it out. And just so you know, 
Here's a little insider tip. We offer the best Disney Epcot tickets discounts. You can get in on this deal by visiting orlandovacation.com or give us a call 1-800-641-4008 and speak with one of our many vacation specialists. If you're looking for more tips and tricks for your next Orlando vacation or need help planning, be sure to check out our website at orlandovacation.com where we offer the best discounted prices and have a variety of blogs to help you make the most out of your Orlando vacation. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.